Well, would you look at the time? It's Tool Time Tuesday, and today I want to talk about one of my favorite upgrades to my air compressor so that I can feed more power to my tools. Now, this is my DeWalt air compressor. It was gotten at a Tractor Supply Co. on Black Friday a few years ago. That's irrelevant, but the point is, it comes with a cheap air regulator, and quite frankly, it was not supplying immediate power to the tools. There was a little bit of lag time. It wasn't doing so great. So the first thing I decided to upgrade was the regulator. However, we can do so much better than just using a standard regulator. These ones from Ingersoll Rand come as a regulator, water, air separator, and oil fogger all in one combo kit. Now they range from anywhere from these quarter inch versions all the way up to these half inch versions. And I've personally had hundreds and hundreds of hours of use on this quarter inch version back when my air compressor was stock. So because of my positive experience with this for the past two years, I decided I had no problem spending the money on the bigger version. Now, why did I go with the bigger version? Well, it's quite simple. The more air you can supply at the same pressure to your tools, the more power you'll get out of the tools. So, bigger fittings at the same pressure means more airflow, means more power. Now, this quarter inch version right here has a rating of about 47 SCFM that it can supply max. These half inch MPT versions supply well over in excess of 100 SCFM which is far more than any of my tools will ever really need. But just in case I wanted to, I've upgraded, I've upgraded all the piping to half inch, my hose is half inch, my fittings are half inch airflow, good old G-types. But uh, as far as the regulators go, let's talk about how exactly these function. Now, these are basically the exact same thing comparatively, just one is bigger than the other, so we'll use the small one to demonstrate some of the more finer details. So first off, let's talk about the regulator. Actually, it's probably easier to talk about the regulator on this big one. The regulator is pretty simple to operate. If you want to change the regulated pressure, you pull up on the lock, twist it in one direction to lower the pressure, other direction to raise the pressure, and then press down to lock it in place. Now, when it comes to separating oil and water, I believe it's around 5 microns is what they specified for the water-air separator. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that exactly. But when there's no pressure in the system, you can remove the uh, air-water separator cartridge, but you don't actually have to. You see, there is a little plunger on the bottom of these things, so you can visually inspect when you're starting to get pretty high up in the uh, amount of water you can store, and you just... Press on that, and then the water will actually drain out. So you don't have to decompress your air compressor to take this off. But if you wanted to, it's pretty simple. You pull down, and then you twist. And then as you pull down, you twist, and then this cartridge will come out. Now, it's a little cumbersome to do with one hand, but there you go. There's no desiccate in this particular filter. So you don't have to worry about changing out desiccate. Uh, we just put this back here for a second, there, so we can keep that off for right now. The next thing we have is the oil fogger, which works pretty much the same way in terms of getting the cartridge in and out. You fill this up with tool oil, and then this little pickup tube sucks up that tool oil and then sends it down line so that your tools are always lubricated, regardless of your daily oiling needs. As long as you've got oil, in this container, you've got oil to your tools. Huzzah! One less step to have to worry about with your air stuff. So, to adjust that, we have a little knob up here. This knob can be turned counterclockwise to increase the amount of oil, or clockwise to reduce the amount of oil that gets sent through the entire system. I like to feed my tools a good amount of oil to keep them lubricated, so I don't mind cranking it up all the way. But, if you have tools such as uh, a spray gun, like a paint gun. You're going to want to put an air water separator directly on that tool so you can uh, also remove some of the oil that comes through the line. You never want to use oil in something like uh, an air gun, uh, specifically like a spray paint gun, because uh, it'll mix with your paint and then uh, you don't want that. But that's a subject for a different day. Today we're talking about your, your standard uh, garage tools that you'll be using to fix up your jalopy. 
So, there's not much else to talk about it. This big boy right here costs about 170 bucks before tax at the local Tractor Supply Co. You can find them on eBay, usually a little less expensive than that. So, uh, they make them in versions that go half inch, quarter inch, and they also have a three eighth inch MPT, should you ever need that. I personally feel the intermediate size is a little pointless, but just know that uh, so up to the half inch, they've got your supplies for basically everything you need. So, uh, I've had great success with these air filter regulators and uh, lubricators. Haven't had any of my tools break on me, and I use cheap Harbor Freight garbage half the time. So it must be oiling things properly. And I do have to refill the oil every once in a while. It's not going to drain that oil, uh, that oil cartridge super fast. But, um, you know, once every month or so, I usually have to fill it back up depending on my usage, of course. So, uh, you know, overall, I like it. It's really good. Uh, honestly, you could go with a lot of different regulators out there, but I, I, I could personally vouch for this one. This one has never done me wrong. Well, I really should say that one. That's the one I've been using mostly, but I have been using this one more and more after I've uh, decided to update the piping. I wanted everything to match. So I have no doubt that this one will last me just as long. And if it doesn't, there's a two year warranty from Ingersoll Rand. I've never had to deal with their warranty service before, but their stuff seems to be made of some pretty quality material, such as this housing is metal. Now this part right here is polycarbonate of some sort. Um, but the main components are good beefy metal, just like you'd like to see. So that's pretty much it. If you've been eyeballing this regulator and you're thinking about pulling the trigger, I'd say you're pretty safe doing so. It'll serve you in good faith for many, many work hours to come.